Track and field is a sport that consists of more than just running. So what makes a sprinter a sprinter? What separates this group from any other group of people, both mentally and physically? To be a sprinter, not only do you have to run, but also be strong enough to maintain such explosive releases of energy while running in short amounts of time. Sprinters typically have physiques, which are much more muscular than long-distance runners. It is very important to do certain workouts that strengthen muscles in particular areas of the body because sprinting uses a large amount of explosive muscle power. To be a successful sprinter, there are three main areas of the body that are required to be in peak shape. Those are the upper body, the abdominal area, and of course the legs. Sprinters also need the mental toughness to train to develop these muscles necessary to compete. The body will encounter much soreness throughout the process of the intense workouts. It is up to the sprinter to make up in their mind that they will overlook the pain and continue to train. The combination of mental toughness and well-developed physiques are required to be an elite sprinter. After you are equipped physically, you need to have the right form if you are going to be an elite sprinter. Again, here, both high levels of mental and physical strength are required. Darren Braithwaite, a 100 and 200 meter sprinter, stated in a peak performance article, a dynamic arm drive is essential at the start, middle, and end of the sprint race. The acceleration of arms accommodates the drive of the legs to get out of the blocks. Upper body strength is used throughout the entire sprinting race, but different races require different times to move them the most. Of course, towards the end of the race, good arm form is hard to maintain with fatigue taking over. This is when power and endurance become necessary factors to maintain. When form begins to fade, a concentration on a purposeful and long arm drive can help prevent the inevitable shortening of stride length that often ensues, explains Braithwaite. There are several workouts for the arms to help maintain such power needed in the pectorals, deltoids, and triceps to get through a sprinting race. Bench press and pull downs are essential lifts in acquiring the power needed. A desired number of repetitions can help with muscle strength and endurance. A few exercises that help core stability and abdominal muscles are bicycle crunches and oblique twists with a medicine ball. Both of these exercises are very effective exercises for strengthening the abdominal muscles. Exercises used to strengthen hip flexors are hip abductions and hip adductions. Weight lifts such as squatting and leg pressing are used to power up the glutes, calves, and hamstrings. Leg curls and snatching are essential exercises to the hamstrings specifically. Wall sitting and deadlifts are also used in strengthening the quadricep muscles. According to breath weight, throughout the sprint, abs and back muscles will be working as a kind of straitjacket to allow for maximum power transference between upper body, legs, and track. The action of holding a tight stomach helps in the process of evenly transferring energy throughout the body down to the track and back up to the body to gain power. Without a strong set of supporting muscles, the body will cause extra movement and eventually overwork itself during the sprint and waste more energy than needed to finish. By bracing the body at the mid-region, it will give more support to the rest of the movement in sprinting. A smooth movement of sprinting will cause a sprinter to move more efficiently down the track during their race. Last but not least, the lower body muscles, also called the primary muscles of sprinting, are also greatly used by sprinters during a race. Hip flexors, hamstrings, quadriceps, glutes, and calf muscles are the essential areas to focus on for lower body strength. They are all activated during sprints, so they need to be strong but also have muscular endurance. The mental toughness of a sprinter is very important to accomplish such intense workouts and training. In order to be the best, one must train and have the desire to get that first place. As a sprinter, pain is normal on a day-to-day -day basis. If one cannot get through that, then they do not deserve to be the winner of what they are training for. Only one person wins the gold medal with running, unlike a baseball or a football team where there is only one of two teams winning. So as you can see, sprinting is not just running really fast. Vital muscles are specifically emphasized and should be highly considered in strengthening exercises before participating in sprint races. With weak muscles in these areas, the end of a race will seem further than what it actually is. Mental toughness should not be overlooked.
It takes a great ability of mental toughness to not only train to develop the physique necessary to be an elite sprinter, but also to deal with the unique demands of sprinting inherent in the sport. Sprinters have to put in the work that they want to get out of the race. The winner of the race not only determines the faster sprinter, but also the strongest sprinter, both physically and mentally. in the house.